Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the beauty of mathematics, and why in the grand scheme of the market cycle, I believe time is still on our side. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this is actually not just a Bitcoin, this is the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. And what it shows is how it generally goes through these boom and bust cycles. Now I do this series and I update it on the first of every month. So if you're curious what we talked about in prior months, just go back to the first of every month and you will find this video basically going back for the last year. Okay. Now, currently, as of June 1st, 2021, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a very modest 1.63 trillion with the total cryptocurrency uh, fair value logarithmic regression trend line coming out at, at an even more humble 714 billion, representing an overvaluation of the cryptocurrency market capitalization of approximately 128 percent. Now, we know that things can stay in the overvaluation territory for years, for years. And I have expressed in a few recent videos that in the short term, things could remain bearish. But in the grand scheme of the cycle, we're still very much on course. I still think Bitcoin will head to six figures before the next halving. I just think as we as we've shown in prior beauty of mathematics videos that we were fairly extended and that a lot of similarities between 2013 were taking place and that we could have in fact a double peak cycle okay and we're going to show you exactly what i mean by that statement so if you take the percent difference between the total cryptocurrency market capitalization and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line and then shift it by a hundred percent so that, so that you're getting these undervaluations that come in between zero to 100%, it looks something like this, okay? What do you notice? We have three major peaks in the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization. What else do you notice? You notice that our current peak is still a long ways off from what I would consider to be the total blow-off market cap top. I don't think we are at a market cycle peak. And I think that is fairly well represented in this metric that we've been covering on the channel for a long time. So hopefully this clears up my general stance on the market. Again, my stance has not changed. I'm a proponent of lengthening cycles and diminishing returns. I just think that as we saw in 2013, we could be in for a few months where we either trend down or go sideways for a while and the market needs a cool off period before going to new highs. So that is my stance that we probably will not have a V-shaped recovery immediately, but it's going to be a long grind back up. Okay, it's gonna be a long grind back up and we're probably gonna spend some months consolidating at these prices or maybe even lower prices, but that doesn't change where I think the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is headed over the next one to two years. Now, one of the things we can say too is whenever you're in the green territory, this means that you're in this undervaluation region. Anytime you're there, historically, it is basically the best time to buy crypto. During those times, it can be somewhat bearish. Those times can last for years, but that is the best time to buy crypto, not now. Now, I'm not saying buying crypto now is a bad thing because I think within the grand scheme of the cycle, we still have a ways to go, but it's certainly not as attractive as buying a year ago when Bitcoin was trading around four to $5,000. Clearly, there's a, a big difference between buying today and buying when Bitcoin was trading at like, you know, 20% of its current valuation. So with this in mind, we're going to continue to show the similarities of this cycle in 2013. Okay, we've been showing this similarity on this channel going back at least until January, and I think we noted the similarities between the 2013 cycle, even some in 2020. And we said, hey guys, this is starting to look eerily similar 
to the 2013 market cycle where we could in fact have a double peak cycle, okay? And so far, it seems like that is playing out. Now, clearly, a lot of people have been talking about Wyckoff distribution, and I'm not negating anything about that, and maybe that's exactly what is playing out. Maybe the, or maybe I should say that's exactly what did play out. But also, just boiling it down to the math, we identified that this could be a double peak cycle based on the similarities between 2013 and, and that we need to be prepared for that. If you look at the similarities, we came, we had our first capitulation and then back up. This was that 2013 cycle. Similarly, a lot of you will remember the move we had in 2019. And you can see they, they, they both went to sort of the same level on the overvaluation territory. Then they had a capitulation to the yellow, similar levels, back up to the blue, just poking the head above the, uh, above the fair value regression trend line, both of them, and then a final capitulation. This one was pretty bad. This was the pandemic dump that we saw back in March of 2020. But then both of them had these crazy moves to the upside over the next several months for this one and over the next, say, 15 months for this one over here. Okay? And so we got, it, you know, we got this double peak move or what we're projecting to be a double peak move for this market cycle. Now, when looking to see where that it could come back down to, we can note that it came back down further in 2013 than where it currently is today. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to go down to those levels, but even if the price trended sideways, we would actually go down because again, the, the fair value logarithmic regression trend line of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is a monotonically increasing function. Therefore, the percent difference between a, a, a market cap that's going sideways and a monotonically increasing function would actually go back down. So this would go down if the fair value, if the, if the total market cap goes sideways, because we're, we're comparing the extension from the fair value regression trend line, which again is monotonically increasing, which means it just goes up, it doesn't go down, it just goes up. So we've seen the retracement, we've seen this first peak of what we're projecting to be potentially a double peak cycle, okay? You might even call it a triple peak if you wanna include this first one over here, but most people don't include that. Um, but I would say this could be the first blow off top of a double peak cycle. Now, what's interesting is the reason we speculated this move, the reason we speculated that it could happen at about the 400% overvaluation, which remember it shifted by 100%, so this is actually 300% or so. The reason we speculated on that was because we just looked at the fact that this was about one third. So this intermediate peak here was about one third the overvaluation of this one. And then at 400%, it was about one third the, the valuation of this one, which was about 1200%. And so it did come fairly close to that projection. So the other interesting thing is the time projection because it's, it's always interesting to look at, at extension levels in terms of the price. But we also wanna know when things could happen as well. We can very dubiously extrapolate or speculate and note that the time between this major market cycle peak and the intermediate peak of the following cycle was approximately 672 days. This one over here was approximately 1,211 days. The time between the intermediate peak and the next market cycle peak was 235 days. If we take 672 over 1211, set it equal to 235 over X and solve for X. If you wondered when you would ever, if you if you ever wondered back in middle school when you would ever need to know this mathematics, you should have just answered, or you should have known you would need it for cryptocurrency investing one day. You solve for X, it gives you approximately 432.49 days from this point. Or where would that put us? If we could take this extrapolation or speculation to the bank, which we can't, we can't, it's a very simple extrapolation, but this is what we do, we dubiously speculate, where would it put it? It would put it in July 2022. So if we take these ratios and speculate when the next market cycle peak could be, it could look something like that in July of 2022, which would actually be just over a year from now, which could come to a lot of 
could come as a surprise to a lot of people who may be assuming that the market cycle peak will happen in 2021. But as I've mentioned, I've always been a proponent of lengthening cycle theory, and therefore I think that this is also in line with the belief that we will see a cycle that could very well extend beyond 2021. With that said, I want to make it clear that if Bitcoin goes to like 150K this year, we might have to rethink things. But until that happens, I think it's best to prepare that, hey, this thing might drag out longer than people expect. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. It just it gives us more time, gives us more time to accumulate if that's what if that's your thing. Uh, and it just gives us more time to, you know, to just continue to ride out the market cycle. Does this make sense in light of other charts we show? This is the market cycle ROI of Bitcoin as measured from market cycle bottom. If we were to go out another 432 days, or yeah, 432 days, it would put it somewhere out here. Could that make sense? Looks like it can make sense to me. You still would have diminishing returns. Uh, potentially, obviously that's not, that's not uh, this is just my projection drawn based off, off the diminishing extension from the fair value regression trend line. You can see it does diminish each cycle. Looks like it can make sense to me. If you want to measure it from, it, I, I should say that we should put some tolerance on this. I mean, July of 2022 is just what this dubious speculation calls for. It could happen even later than that, potentially. Maybe even goes into 2023. Um, if you measure it from the halving, it would look all the way out here. So it would be a little bit of a stretch compared to, to these, but still plausible, still plausible that something like that could happen. So. Going back to this chart, what do we know? What do we know? Well, the, the extension from the fair value, this one came well above the green line. The next one came just above it. This one came just to it. My guess is that we do not quite make it to the green line this cycle because we are experiencing diminishing returns. If you draw angles, I don't actually have the angles drawn, but you can see that as we go from cycle bottom to cycle peak, the trend angle changes each market cycle. What else do you notice? Well, this one here, this one here, just basically went straight up. This one over here basically just went straight up. This one is a lot more dubious, right? You can see 2019 came above where we where I've drawn this line. However, we don't know where this line will ultimately have a market cycle peak. It could fully encapsulate this if it happens a little bit sooner than than um, than July of 2022 or so. I mean, this is just a random line I drew out connecting this point to this point and extending it further out. Um, but regardless, what you may note is that in 2013, when we had a double peak cycle, we came up to the trend line and then back down and then back up. My speculation is that this is our first local top to a double peak market cycle top and that it could look something like this. This is, this is sort of what I'm thinking will happen for the asset class as we continue to navigate this market cycle. And my guess is that we will, the longer it takes us to, to hit the market cycle peak, the more likely we will to hit a total cryptocurrency market capitalization of approximately $10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion dollars. And as I always say, every single video, as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Click the bell icon to turn on your notifications, and I'll see you next time. Bye.